Welcome back, YouTube viewers, to the 2008 Cleveland Browns Bash. I'm your host, AJ, here with the Week 12 edition of the show. Now, before I get into our game against the Houston Texans, I'm going to talk briefly about our game against the Buffalo Bills. And it was a very exciting fourth quarter. Uh, things got started off with Jerome Harrison's 72-yard touchdown run. And one big play, unfortunately, in this case, deserves another because Bills return man, Leotis McKelvin, takes it 98 yards the other way on the ensuing kickoff for the score to bring the Bills back within three at that point, 23-20. Uh, to 20. And uh, skipping ahead to a minute and 39 seconds left, our very own Phil Dawson boots the 56-yard field goal. And that was awesome. And let's just say I, uh, even though, I mean, I, I believe our season's over, and I mean, you know, I mean, let's get real on this. We're all, you know, extreme optimists here. I mean, it is over. Um, I, I was getting pretty nervous when the Bills were going back down, and one of the reasons was because had we choked, it would have been the, for the first time in NFL history that I believe a team was leading a game by 13 or more three consecutive weeks and lost all three games. And I didn't want to, you know, be associated with that. I mean, you know, as, as a Browns fan, I mean, that would be a pretty, a pretty uh, you know, crappy record to hold. And, uh, I, I mean, I was getting pretty nervous there. And then Ryan Lindell, wide right. That sucks so bad. Uh, but it was very happy for us. I, I, I definitely feel sorry for the Bills, though. But, you know, playing spoilers fun, and that's what it's all about. So there you go. Um, the game was really uh, even numbers-wise. First downs, it was 19-18 to 18 in favor of Buffalo. Uh, total yards, 337-334 to 334 in favor of us. Um, really, uh, the only thing that was really lopsided was the turnovers. And we only won by two, 29-27. to 27. Yet the turnovers, the Bills had a lost fumble and three interceptions. We had no interceptions, although Brady Quinn had a few that were pretty close, and we did not fumble the football, and yet we only won by two, and I am going to say this, I'm not going to give the defense any big ups or anything right now, because one, well, except for Sean Rogers, because one of the interceptions, he was triple teamed by the Bills' offensive line, because of course we were only sending three guys, he gets his hand up in the air and tips the ball anyway, just a, a great play by Sean Rogers and uh, we pick it off. Now the other two interceptions, yeah, our guys had to physically pick the ball off, but they were still bad throws by Trent Edwards. Our defense, in my opinion, uh, still was not incredible, and one of the reasons was the rushing yards. I told you last week that the Bills averaged 90 rushing yards a game going into that game. They had 186 rushing yards. They more than doubled their season average. Very disappointing there, but you know, we got the win, and that's always nice. Now moving to our game against Houston, some keys here. Uh, first off, as I was talking just now about our defense, uh, do something. Because um, despite a 3-7 and seven record, the Houston Texans do have a pretty good offense. Uh, whether we do something um, against their passing game, against the running game, or if we just get some turnovers, or a combination of two, or all of those, we need to do something. Against the Bills, we played well against the pass, and we got some turnovers. Now we played bad against the rushing game. Now against Houston, we need to find uh, some combination because, um, well, Houston averages 114 yards per game on the ground, uh, which if you go by the Buffalo game theory, that's 228 yards that they're going to run against us. And um, they also rank fifth in the NFL with 256 passing yards per game. Um, so odds are they're going to score a lot of points if those two hold up. Uh, those two stat categories. So if that's the case, we're definitely going to need some turnovers. Uh, we're going to have to take advantage of every opportunity that they give us. Um, my next key, and possibly the most important, is to run, run, run the football. Perhaps the most critical element of our game against Houston is how much and how effectively we run the football against them. Um, because this is very interesting. When Jamal Lewis has 20 or more carries, the Browns are 3-0 and this season. When Jamal Lewis has less than 20 carries, we're 1-6. and And that one win was last week against Buffalo when Jerome Harrison had the 72-yard burst. So, uh, speaking of Harrison, I think he is the best running back in the NFL that averages two or less carries per game. Uh, we have to give this guy more opportunities to do what he did against Buffalo every week. Um, 
But uh, going back to Jamal Lewis, uh, by the way, last season in our 27-17 victory over Houston, Jamal Lewis ran for 134 yards on 29 carries. So there you go. Uh, and, you know, one of the main things is, you know, he can get his physicality uh, and his presence into the game with the more carries that we give him. And uh, he's just a beast, and he can really set a tone if we give him the opportunity to. Um, so I hope that we do this week against Houston. And then my third and final key is for us to protect Brady Quinn. As most of you know, he fractured his index finger on his throwing hand last week against the Bills, but he is expected to play and you know, start, and that's good news. Um, but we definitely have to play tough up front on the offensive line uh, to limit the amount of hits that Houston defenders can try to get on Brady Quinn's hand. Um, and this is another reason to plan on running the football a lot in this game. Uh, now some notes and numbers. Uh, the Browns lead the all-time series against the Texans 3-2. to two, And Cleveland is 5-3 and all-time in games played on November 23rd. Uh, the Browns are 1-4 in Cleveland this season, which is disappointing when compared to our 7-1 and home record from last year. Uh, and also, Cleveland has apparently uh, approached Bill Cower with a possibility of coaching the team in the future, and uh, we're reportedly willing to give him 8 to $9 million a year for the job, so it's going to be interesting to see how he responds to that. Uh, now my pick is Houston by one, and I see the upset occurring for two main reasons. First, I have a feeling we are not going to rely on the run like we need to do. And second, I have a feeling we're going to have a long day defensively, particularly against Steve Slayton. I just have uh, this worry um, about him this week for some reason, having a big game. Um, now I realize my picks have not been very good this season at 5-5, five and five, so don't take my word for it. I hope I'm wrong. It seems, though, that the games I have picked the Browns this year have been the wrong ones. So let's hope I'm wrong this week, but the Browns will win if I am, so that would be nice. Um, now I'm really excited for next week's game against the Indianapolis Colts because, as you know, those are the same guys that kept us out of the playoffs last year. No, it was not the Tennessee Titans because they would not have beaten the Colts' starting team. Oh, man, that was so frustrating, but it's in the past now. Um, but I am looking forward to that. Hopefully we can play spoiler against the Colts. So uh, this was uh, a preview of our game against Houston. And I'll be back with you guys next week with a preview of our game against the Colts and a recap of this game against the Texans. Hopefully at that point we will lead the all-time series against Houston 4-2 to instead of 3-2. to So I am AJ, and this is the 2008 Cleveland Browns Bash. I'll see you guys next week.